Hello, watch enthusiasts. Now, today I'd like to continue the series um, uh, of, of monthly episodes discussing some watches released over the previous month, which I found interesting and, and of note compared to other releases. And this month there have been quite a few, uh, in the form of a, a great flurry of different chronographs from, from various brands, um, along with some, some smaller releases. Now, the first watch to talk about is the new Breitling Chronoliner B04 Boutique Edition. And this is a direct uh, successor, I suppose, to the previous um, Breitling pilots uh, in the form of the 765 co-pilot, which became a real favourite um, among a great deal of collectors due to its, uh, its rather elegant but versatile style, um, with its, its relatively simple chronograph layout and 12-hour bezel. Whereas in this case, the 12-hour the bezel has been replaced with a new blue ceramic 24-hour uh, bezel, which goes along with the fact that this is in fact a GMT watch. Now the dimensions of this watch are, are as follows. It's a 46mm watch um, and, uh, and features a 24mm lug width, so it is a rather large piece, but being a pilot's watch it does make sense to be a very legible tool in the cockpit. Despite being large though, the watch does follow the traditional design cues of the 765 line, with the brushed and polished finishes um, with bevels on the lugs, with relatively short lugs to, to make the watch more wearable despite its, its rather large and imposing size. But of course the changes here are the fact that this has, now has a blue dial, uh, and of course that matching ceramic blue bezel, which incidentally doesn't have a, a, a blue um, insert, but rather the entire bezel is ceramic, which does add to, a, to, add to the scratch resistance and, and act as sort of a, a protective um, frontage uh, to the watch to protect the, the metal parts from denting and scratches. But on the dial we have three cream subdials with a slightly larger subdial at um, uh, 3 o'clock, which is in keeping with the history of this watch as well as those six loom points on that dial as well, um, which were specifically there because the original co-pilot was used for timing uh, various events on the ground, for example, refueling. Now, that, that's no longer the case, as one no longer has a 15-minute uh, totalizer on that side, but still it harks back to those days of traditional uh, aviation watches. And one addition to this watch, uh, courtesy of its new, um, new in-house movement with a 70-hour power reserve, um, is that it has a GMT hand, which is that slim red hand, a uh, red-tipped hand, which um, uh, which corresponds with the bezel to allow you to take uh, to carry three time zones on this watch. Again, a really functional um, uh, addition to this watch for the pilot. Now, along with this, the dial is very, very classic in its format. The the um, applied Breitling logo is a very old-fashioned style with those wings uh, and the the anchor, which I must say I find extremely attractive on this dial. Um, although um, I, I do think the, the main uh, feature of this dial really is that sunburst blue effect which matches the, the rubber strap and, uh, and bezel extremely well to create a, a very interesting uh, addition to, to the Breitling lineup. Similarly, there is a 24 hour, uh, there are 24 hour graduations rather around the inside of the, the, the dial uh, to allow you to keep a time zone more easily without having to change the, the um, orientation of the bezel if you're say, having a, a third time zone for instance. Of course, the dial is extensively loomed, and unlike the originals, features a, a fully batten style of, um, of dial without having the, the numerals that used to be found at 12 o'clock on, uh, on the older Breitling 765s. Um, but nonetheless, I feel this, is, this adds a modernity to the watch that wasn't present in the original, being a vintage timepiece, along with the, the loomed hands, um, which are, are very much in keeping with the original. Of course, the subdial hands aren't loomed, apart from the 30-minute uh, totalizer. Um, which again, I, I think uh, the loom could have been added to add practicality to the watch. Um, and similarly, I don't find the, the date being placed at the, um, the 4.30 position to be particularly attractive, but then it is a functional feature. Now one point to be made about this watch is that unlike the various other versions um, of this watch, of the, the Chrono Liner, this watch is only available in uh, dedicated Breitling boutiques, so uh, shops which are only Breitling, such as for example the one on New Bond Street, which is exclusively a Breitling shop. Um, and will sell for, for $9,150. And similarly, this watch is a limited edition of 100 pieces, making it really a very rare piece, um, and rather an interesting piece for this price as well, considering it now has an in-house uh, Breitling movement. Now, the next watch in this video is another chronograph, this time from Panerai. And this is a new 42mm version of the, the Marinostrum, the, the, uh, the dedicated chronograph of the Panerai range, which has previously been released in, uh, in, uh, in very um, uh, short supply, um, with uh, 99 and 150 piece um, limited editions of this watch. And the original watch of 1943 was a deck watch designed specifically for the Navy, um, with, uh, with various characteristics making it a, a very functional watch, uh, for for a military for military personnel, it was a 52 mm watch, so a very large piece, and um, extremely legible with their their radiomere uh, luminescent material on the dial, 
um, which again was a, a very functional um, a watch, a tool watch at core. And of course the, that was reflected in the size, making it all, all, all the more uh, legible. And the, the, sadly a lot of documentation was lost uh, from this, this original watch in, in 1966 with a flood in Florence which uh, destroyed this all. And, and in 1993, Panerai decided to, to resurrect this, this ancient reference um, with a 43mm blue, uh, sorry, 42mm blue dial version of the watch. And this watch wasn't particularly true to the original, um, due to its size and also due to the way the bezel was made, um, and due to various other details such as the blue dial, which was very different to the, the original, um, much more greeny hue to the original dial with, uh, with copper uh, hands. But um, but this watch was the product of Panerai not having documentation describing the watch, though in 2005 Panerai did actually um, acquire one of the, pro the original prototypes at auction for $132,000, um, which uh, has, has allowed them to produce watches in both 2010 and 2015, which are much more accurate to the original with 52mm cases um, and, uh, and much more true to the original uh, movements, uh, unlike the original 1993 version. Um, which uh, which featured an ETA 2801 with a Dubois de Pras uh, module placed on top of it for the chronograph. Now Panerai have just made the choice to recreate the original 1993 version in a more modern format, keeping that 42mm size, because the 52mm size reintroduced in 2010 in a limited edition of 99 pieces um, was simply too too unwearable, frankly, to, um, to to be a practical piece for owners. And they did try and address this in 2015 with the titanium version of that watch, but still it was cumbersome despite being light. This version at 42mm in stainless steel with a, um, uh, a circular brushing on the top of the lugs and polished sides, uh, as well as that, uh, that wonderful blue dial is extremely true to that recreation, um, down to the movement itself, which is an ETA 2801-2 with a Dubois de Pras movement uh, chronograph module sorry, placed on top of it, and then COSC certified. Of course, this movement isn't particularly illustrious, and I must say, for the price of 9,900 euros this watch is going for, I, I personally believe they're asking quite a lot of buyers um, to make do with this movement. That said, though, in terms of recreating the original watch, they really have done a good job because they have recreated the exact movement placed in that watch, um, which I must say certainly is, uh, is, is to be applauded. Um, but for 9,900 euros, that certainly is a, a fairly modest movement, I must admit. Um, that said, though, it is it is a far more wearable package at 42 millimeters, um, and uh, and with a 50 meter water resistance, which again isn't too much. But then the original had the same water resistance, which again shows the the uh, the care to detail taken here, um, which which really is is demonstrated by this watch as a whole. And the watch is limited to uh, to a thousand pieces uh, worldwide, and um, and is now available. Now the next watch on this list is an extremely quietly restrained watch which I feel won't uh, get a great deal of publicity, but I think deserves it, because it, it, it uh, marks a departure from larger 40mm dress watches, back down to a more traditional 36mm size for Vacheron Constantin. And this is the Patrimony small model 36mm. And this is a 36mm uh, wide, uh, 8 by one millimeter thick dress watch, which returns back to more classic sizes for Vacheron Constantin. And the, this size change really has had a very positive effect on the style of this watch, as an extremely simple and traditional dress watch. Now one benefit of the, the newly uh, reduced size is that compared to the 40mm version, the, the proportions of the dial, this uh, wonderful uh, silvered uh, opaline uh, white, um, slightly off-white uh, off dial, um, the size of the indices have, uh, have changed from being uh, very slim to being slightly broader and shorter, also, due to the size of the movement, the date is now nearer the, the base of the watch, which does add a certain balance to the watch, um, which, because it matches the Vacheron Constantin logo very, very well, and I think balances the watch much better to create a, a very well-proportioned timepiece, which uh, sits with that very classic and, and respectable air that this watch uh, should have. In terms of styling, this watch truly is about as classic as they come, uh, being a very simple three-hand and date model. Um, with a, with a, the the entirety of the the watch lined up along that um, the, that six clock axis, which certainly makes for a balanced watch, which is is effortlessly classic. Now the case is is again a uh, a, a, a thirty six millimeter case. In this case, in uh, in pink gold, eighteen karat pink gold, and again this is very much in keeping, which doesn't create any t any too large um, uh, differences in terms of color, with a very uh, a very soft change between that hue of the dial and those, um, those pink gold indices, which are in this case applied, and, and very, very um, subtle in terms of their, uh, their difference from the dial of, in terms of depth. 
Similarly, The Movement is, is a really wonderful piece, but very, very classic, which is the Caliber 2450 Q6, which is a 40-hour power reserve automatic movement from Vacheron Constantin, which is a Geneva seal movement with superb finishing, beveling, and, uh, and Côte de Genève uh, finishing along all its bridges with a 22-karat gold rotor. Due to all these features, I do feel this watch is, is really one of the most classically correct and wonderfully executed dress watches of this year, because it's very unpretentious about what it presents as being a, a really very high-end dress watch, in the most simple sense from a, an illustrious brand like Vacheron Constantin, with the Geneva seal on the movement, which again shows how, um, how high quality it is. And of course, Vacheron Constantin movements that do have the Geneva seal um, take 40% uh, longer to make, which again is a, a further benefit of this watch. Now the price of this watch is rather large, but I must say for the quality going into it, I think it's fairly reasonable, at 21,500 euros. Now the next watch I'd like to talk about is a really wonderful addition to the A. Langanzona uh, lineup in terms of their, their chronographs. And this is the new 1850 chronograph in black. And this is, I suppose, someone called an entry-level version of the datagraph. But I must say I've been impressed by this watch as a really nice alternative to a datagraph, um, which costs nearly half as much as the datagraph. Um, where the data graphs comes in at uh, 87,500 euros, this watch comes in at 49. So it really does uh, cut a great deal of money off that, considering the complexity of the movement and the amount of uh, care and detail that has to go into this watch. And this watch is uh, is a new version of, the, of that watch, which now it now comes in black. And this watch had previously uh, come in in a white dial version and had lost its, um, its pulsometer, but uh, that has returned for this model, and, uh, and in this case is available in black. And it features a 39.5mm uh, by 11mm um, uh, white, uh, white gold 18 karat, uh, 18 karat case, which again is, is timelessly classic and effortlessly a Lang and Zona in its, its execution with those lugs and um, very simple case finishing, um, though of course finished to the, the highest degree. Now in terms of dial arrangement, it is certainly very similar to the datagraph, and in fact has a, a movement based on the same architecture, in this case, the uh, the L951.5, uh, but I'll, I'll talk about that in just a moment. And of course, it has those those offset subdials placed in the lower half of the dial, which I think do uh, do help balance the dial, and and certainly is an interesting arrangement when a great deal of watches have them placed above or in line with the centre of the, the dial. And this watch features a far more simple dial, and in my opinion, actually a more attractive dial because it doesn't have that date um, placed at the twelve o'clock position, and the various other complications that would normally adorn the dial of a datagraph but in this case it simply has a very beautifully finished matted dial with, um, with uh, concentric lines uh, cut into the, the subdials to further uh, emphasise them while keeping them the same colour as the, the rest of the dial to make this watch a, a very apt dress watch. Now the dial also features various levels with a raised pulsometer as a sort of a chapter ring around the edge of the dial um, which, which I think again adds um, a certain um, depth to the dial and certainly draws the eye to the centre of the dial um, due to this, um, this sort of uh, gradually um, a lowering depth to the dial, which is, is very interesting and attractive. Of course, the hands are, are beautifully finished. In this case, they're gold hands, which are, are polished uh, beautifully, um, along with a, a counterbalance on the second hand, which, which runs along that central um, uh, uh, cutout of the dial, which I think further adds depth, um, as does the rest of the dial, as I, I've said, um, said repeatedly. But certainly, this is a very, very well-formed watch to create the air of, of the datagraph, but uh, without that great expense, and while creating a, a wonderful package for someone who, who wants to have a slightly more simple timepiece. Of course, the piece de résistance of this piece must be that movement, which is the in-house calibre uh, L951.5. And this has a 60-hour power reserve and has a flyback uh, chronograph um, with a column wheel um, engagement and really does have utterly sublime finishing. This is one of the best finished uh, movements I've seen. Um, and I was asked actually various uh, times why I didn't include um, this brand in my uh, best finished watches video. Um, and uh, the reason for that was really that despite the fact their movements are wonderful, I was really commenting on, on case and dial finishing um, and putting emphasis on that rather than the movements. Um, and there I do feel that Breguet uh, put a certain emphasis on making more complex cases. But certainly when it comes to movements, they do produce utterly wonderful finishing with bevels on the edges and really wonderful design to, to create an architecture which is both very functional but also very beautiful to, to, to look at through that exhibition case back. Of course, the whole movement is open worked, so you can really see the engagement of the various functions, um, notably the chronograph in this case, um, which, which I think does add a certain merit to this movement and, and makes it altogether more... Um, 
uh, more appealing to a prospective buyer because one really can see the functions, um, which is something we're not always given on, on such um, beautiful pieces. Um, so sometimes due to the thickness of the watch and not having an exhibition case back, but more often by not having the cutouts necessary, whereas here an emphasis really has been placed on this, which is something I truly do appreciate. And this watch is also much easier to acquire than uh, any other versions of this uh, 1815 chronograph, uh, notably the other uh, white dial version, uh, due to the fact that uh, in this case it's available to any um, uh, to buy in any retailer of the brand, um, no matter whether they are a uh, an independent um, retailer which sells other other brands as well, or if they are uh, an A Langazona um, boutique, which which is something that can't be uh, can't be done with the various other models in the 1815 lineup, which uh, again makes this watch much easier to acquire. Um, though the price is still rather high at €49,000, you certainly are getting a great deal of watch for the money. Now the next watch I'd like to talk about, and the final watch in this video, is the MBNF HM6 Alien Nation. And MBNF are a brand which I, I greatly admire after speaking to them at uh, Baselworld. I must say they make some of the best watches in terms of uh, making truly spectacular timepieces. Um, and this is no exception. And this is a limited edition of four pieces in the HM6, um, uh, lineup and uh, and these are the, each model has different color accents and these are watches which are 50 millimeters by 51 millimeters but due to those drop down lugs are actually wearable for most people though of course they won't fit under a cuff because they're 22 millimeters thick but really this is more of a spectacular talking piece than really a, a usable um, uh, timepiece though I must say they are truly wonderful timepieces to look at and the, the, this watch is made up of, of a, a case made of uh, over 90 parts, uh, of which um, there are 12 uh, sapphire, uh, sapphire crystals individually made um, to, 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 to show the, the inter inner workings of the watch, which is always a complaint I had of the original, um, which had a titanium case that was, of course, opaque, meaning that you couldn't see the wonderful workings of that incredible movement. Now, that case has also been assembled using a great deal of uh, luminescent resin, which effectively um, uh, works like a normal lum luminescent material, but in this case is actually a solid material, which is applied to both the, 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 the time wheels in the bottom two circular orbs of this watch, and the rotors at the top, which spin when the, uh, the, the main winding rotor spins, um, which is again a wonderful feature of this, and it's geared so that they spin very, very quickly when, when there's the slightest movement of the rotor which is just intention to detail, which really does um, differentiate this brand from others as far as um, uh, incredibly um, elaborate timepieces go of a, a very uh, different style. And this watch is designed effectively to look like a spaceship because one has six small gold aliens which are hand-to-hand -hand, uh, carved, placed around the inside of the movement, which you can see through the, um, through the, the, uh, the sapphire case, which adds to the, the wonder of this watch, along with one alien in a sort of a, a, a um, command seat, if you will, um, at the six o'clock, if such a thing exists on this watch position. Now, in order to keep the watch relatively uh, wearable in terms of weight, all the fixtures and fittings, other than the um, than some of the small parts of the movement, um, are either sapphire or titanium, which again is very strong and very light, which, which certainly does add to the, the functionality and practicality of this watch, at least in terms of being uh, vaguely wearable. Of course, the wonderful part of this watch is that flying tourbillon in the centre of the watch, which mimics the um, the, the battle axe, um, shaped rotor on the case back, and of course has those wonderful um, closing uh, parts which uh, effectively um, uh, are articulated and will cover it uh, to protect it from uh, from sunlight, um, because of course sunlight damages oils, um, though I must say it has very very little functionality other than just being a, a very interesting feature, um, and uh, and of course this uh, this central bubble has been enlarged so that you can see a little alien sitting next to it which is again another touch which is, uh, is something that's very playful and really isn't seen from other brands. Now despite the fact that all four of these watches are sold, and, and rumour has it they were all sold to the same person and commissioned by them, hence the fact there was very little press release about this watch, um, and no real story, whereas a lot of their watches do have a, a great story behind them. Um, these watches cost uh, a half a million dollars each, um, which really is uh, an incredible amount of money for one of these watches, and. Uh, uh, and certainly does represent how MBNF have grown as a, a luxury brand over the years. So anyway, I'll, I'll end the video here, but thank you very much for watching, and do please like, share, and subscribe to help the channel, and do leave your comments down below as to what you think of these watches and, and of the styles and designs presented here. So thank you very much for watching, this is Sam on the Watch Guy, over and out.